Can you guys hear me? presenting on Ponce Intercolidopathy coming from St. George University. Hi, so my name is Sai Buringeri. I'm from St. George University. So I, my presentation is on a case report for a rare disease called Ponte Intercolidopathy, which I saw in a patient in Dr. Shakur's and Dr. Uthal's clinic. So uh, I didn't see the patient on her initial presentation, but I still did see the patient for her follow-up. So the story is that when she initially came, she the, let me go back. So the history is she's a 20-year-old female uh, with sudden loss of vision in her right eye. So her HPI is that two nights ago before coming to the clinic, she was watching a movie and she noticed some fuzzy spot in her vision. And she just rubbed it off saying, okay, just nighttime, so it'll go away. However, when she woke up in the morning, it was still there. So then she decided to come to the hospital. She was referred to the UVITIS clinic. So, and she referred the spot as fuzzy and the center of her vision in of her right eye. But it's stable in such time, so it's not increasing, not, so it's stable. And she denies any pain, any flurs in her eyes, any flashes of light. Uh, but she did say that a few months ago she had a recent episode of bronchitis which she had to take z -Pak, and it resolved by after that. But she denies any re other recent infections, any history of STDs, any recent travel. So going on, patient did have Raynaud phenomena but it was resolved and they didn't find any lupus antibodies for that so it was idiopathic. And she did have knee pain but it was because of sports. Her family history is non-contributory, her social She's a biomedical engineering student. She works as an RA on campus and she also works in a lab. Her patient was single and she did not smoke, she did not drink, she did not any illicit drug use. So the history is still, well, you, can, you can't really guess what's happening. So on a physical, uh, with her corrected lenses, her OD is 20-25, her OS is 20-20. Her external examination is normal, her slit lab examination is normal, no floaters no signs of any anterior chamber inflammation. On her fundus, her left eye is normal, but her right eye, the abnormality is there's a subretinal fluid over the macula, which explains her central loss of vision. And also, s they found some small dot white dots in the superior temporal region near the fovea. So refractory, obviously without the glasses, she's highly myopic. And, uh, but her oral labs, like we d like went through it, all TB, sarcoidosis, syphilis, everything were normal. So no infectious causes for contributory here. So her labs and imaging. So obviously her left eye is normal, but her right eye, if, if you see there, there's some inflammation, some edema, and there's some few white spots there. So that's abnormal. So we did a red free fundus for better contrast and also to better provide a baseline retinal vasculature. So again here you can see the, the abnormality and some abnormality, some small white spots, but no real inflammation like vasculitis or any like diabetic retinopathy, nothing like that. So autofluorescence image, you see hypofluorescence right there. Her left eye is again normal. So fluorescent angiography. Right here you can see there's early hyperfluorescence. If you look at the time, it's 18 seconds, which is indicated of choroidal neovascular membrane. And her left eye is again normal, it doesn't show those spots and it's also very thick substance. And if you go further, up for the right eye, it, the bars become fuzzy and it's hyperfluorescent and all this is diagnostic of choroidal neovascular membrane. So we know she has choroidal neovascular membranes, so we don't know what's causing it. And if you look at the OCT, so if you look at the layer, it is ganglion layer, neurofiber layer, outer plex inner plexiform, inner nuclear, outer plexiform, outer nuclear, external limiting membrane. And this, if you see, is there's a loss of RPR, 
layer, and also there's su subretinal fluid there, some retinal fluid there, and also there's a loss of EZ layer, which is inner and photo outer photoreceptor layer. So all this is, again, confirmed scleral neovascular membrane. So the cause of this is no mystery if you read my first slide, <laughs> which is PIC. But the other differentials we need to keep in mind is bird shots, multifocal, and then histoplasmosis, and MWEDS. So we did find that she has PIC. I'll tell you why. So to tell a brief thing about, brief introduction on PIC. So PIC is generally considered part of the white dot syndrome, and it's, it's very rare. I think that it was first described by Wadsky, and he, when he found 20 patients, and he us they usually found it in like myopic, Caucasian young females. And they like, and they really don't have many like inflammatory, anti-inflammatory like floaters, any signs of vitritis. But they also complain, it's usually bilateral, but in this patient it's unilateral. And the symptoms is exactly how the patient is described. There's a loss of central visual acuity, photopsia, and central scotoma, what the patient had. And PIC is usually a benign disease, but it, the reason for vision loss is the choral neovascular membrane, as is in this patient. So the etiology, since it's so rare, we don't know what causes it, but they're looking at, there are several papers which I read said there's plausible familiar predisposition predisposition to autoimmune inflammatory processes, even though she really doesn't have any pr like family history, but maybe Raynaud's phenomena could be part of it. And there's also, they found that there's increased, increased choroidal thickness during the acute phase, and there's a re reduced choroidal thickness during the regression of PIC. So possibly that could be s point to some causes, but still the etiology is unknown, why PIC happens. So the imaging, coming back to the same picture I showed you before. So from what I read, during the active phase of PIC, there's an RPE elevation, and there's a loss of PR layer, which you can see right there. That's the active, during the active phase of PIC. And during the inactive phase, the PR layer restored again. Right there, it's restored. So there you see the loss. There it comes back again. So the treatment, uh, the, from the papers I read, the best treatment is Avastin or any anti-VAGF <coughs> injection uh, for the long-term treatment. And they found that the patient, the b base visual acu acuity was like returned to s from 3.2 to 6 in 12 months and they found no recurrence of PIC. And so in some cases they also had visual acuity like returned to 10 out of 10. So that's pretty good. And the other treatment options include oral steroids, where the treatment recovery was from 1 over 10 to 6.7. Uh, usually they start around 60 milligrams, and they taper to 6 to, six to 8 weeks. And however, the, these, this is not preferred because of the systemic effects of steroids. So this anti-VAGF is more preferred. And the other treatments they looked at was laser, photocoagulation, photodynamic therapy, submacular surgery, mycophenolate. It's mostly if the patient had like recurrent PIC, active, active recurrent PIC. So the other thing was while I was reading, it was really hard to differentiate between other white dot syndromes and PIC. So I made a chart. So from what I found is that in PIC, it's usually young females and myopic, like I already told you. And multifocal choroiditis, it's usually more 30s to 40s. And the histoplasmosis, presumed ocular histoplasmosis syndrome, is if usually in immunocompromised patients who live in endemic areas like Ohio, Mississippi, from what I know, US anyway. <laughs> and then MEDWS is also usually in 15 to 20s. And birth shots is usually in p older patients. And the uh, vitritis symptoms is usually only pre mostly present in multifocal and bird shots, but it's not present in the other three disease, white, other th three diseases I'm telling you. And then clinical course, PIC is acute, like how the patient presented, she had acute loss of vision. And also MEWDS also has acute loss of vision. Well, multifocal is more chronic and usually recurs. And then bird shots also usually chronic and it also recurs. And plasma, again, the histoplasmosis is usually immuno immunocompromised, and this patient was not immunocompromised. And looking at the fundus, 
you see like the bur PIC is usually, it's not extensively like, it's not, the, you don't see extensive retinal, in, like fundal retinal involvement by multifocal, you see so many white dots here. And histoplasmosis, you see some pigments, and but it's still hard to differentiate. You have to look at the history. And then MEWDS, usually I was, when I was reading the papers, they said it doesn't usually involve fovea, and it has a granular appearance compared to the clean white spots you see. And bird shots is usually peripheral. It looks like bird shots, I guess. Um, so based on this, it's hard. So you had to look at the fundus, you had to look, take the history, you had to look at the patient's age, and based on all those factors, you, had, you, sh you, should you should be able to diagnose which is which. But still, it's hard. So back to the patient. So the patient received two avastin interretrial injections one week apart, and she was followed every three months. And she didn't have any recurrence. And again, to compare, in, on her initial presentation before the interretrial anti-VEGF injections, you see the loss of basement PR layer, and you see some fluid here. So after the nine months from the latest OCT, what I saw, you see again, so you see the PR layer is visible. I mean, there's still some cysts, some abnormality, but you see the, the PR layer came back, and which shows that she didn't have active KIC, and she is in remission. So again, this is the latest one from her thing, and this is the, uh, the f photo photograph of her, like the f initial visit. So you can see it's resolved, but still there's the white colored spots involving her phobia. So the conclusion is PIC is part of, considered to part, be a part of the white dot syndrome, and usually affects a young Caucasian myopic female, and the vision changes secondary to CMV. And PAC can be differentiated from what I told you. It's young myopic women. They don't really have any anterior chamber inflammation. And it's a relatively focal involvement to the retina, usually in the center of fovea macula. And out of all the treatment options they looked at, it's usually the anti-VEGF is the most preferred to treat patients with PIC. So that's my case report from what I saw. Um, and these are the references. So any questions? No, thanks. Go ahead. Yeah, it's a week apart. Yeah, it, uh, I saw it was like she had a January 16th, and then that she had a uh, second one on January 23rd. Thanks.